This is Professor Lane again, and now I'm going to show you how I'm writing the code to grade your homework assignment. The playful Python, where you were trying to dream up all the different things, you all the different objects, Python objects, you can put in parentheses without using quotes or even apostrophes or single quotes and still get them to print to the screen. So there are a lot more than what you guys discovered, or you folks discovered, but there are a lot of, um, uh, but anyway, I'm going to show you, you'll get to see as I'm writing the program, some of the answers that your colleagues came up with. Uh, for instance, um, unfortunately, when I download the assignments, the text boxes from um, from Canvas, this is what I get. Uh, so I think there might be a way to go through the Canvas API using Python and maybe get the raw text. But all I really want is this stuff. So I'm going to write some Python that looks at the HTML for a page like this and extracts the code runs the Python in Python, and then you use the, the expression eval to run a Python string as if it contains Python commands. So uh, I'm gonna give that a shot. Um, let's look at the HTML for that page. So let's uh, bring bring back over the, uh, the page. And... Um, So uh, this is what, it, what Brandon came up with for his answers. And this is what it looks like on my end once he's entered it and I've downloaded it with everyone's assignments in a big CSV file. They show up and I download them to this uh, directory called week one within grades. And you can see here that Brandon's is right at the top and that's just why his uh, was the one that I ended up using. So um, uh, to test all my code on. So you always wanna start with the simplest possible problem and work your way up. And I'm gonna show you all that. So this is what the HTML looks like. So how am I gonna find everybody's answers? Well, um, you can see that it's broken up into lines. It looks like these are all separate lines, but unfortunately for, for Brandon's at least, it came out with using this BR character in HTML, which breaks up the lines. So I'm not going to be able to count lines like I thought I was, was, but I'm going to still try it anyway because I've done it on a different person's submission and it seemed to work okay. I can't remember who it was that I worked on. But anyway, um, we'll, we'll just go through the code and see what happens when I try to split it up on lines. I could write a regular expression or search the string for matches. And you'll learn all about that later on in the course um, in order to find this Thing that starts before the code. Maybe I'd look for this padding colon 20 pixels uh, and the close greater than sign, so the closing of the brackets, the angle brackets around that div. Uh, and then I could look for the end of the div. And, but then, so that would give me all this, the text inside, but still HTML, so I'd probably have to do a search and replace. Um, you can do that in, really easily in Python to replace all the paragraph um, mark up tags and uh, also the BR markup tags and replace them with um, empty strings. I could re also replace the, the slash, the forward slash P, um, uh, which is the end of a paragraph mark. So all of this is in one paragraph. Uh, some of the others have new lines and um, and you can see it in the HTML because there'll be a space between them. But anyway, let's uh, let's get down to the code. So I've I've played around in the command line. So I like to do everything. And you can see uh, all the, my command line here is on the right. Um, and this is the, the the most recent commands you can bring up by typing hist. This only works in the IPython REPL or uh, read, uh, evaluate, print, and uh, loop. That means do it all over again. So that's what you do when you write code. You, you first read the line that you've written, you evaluate it, and you then you um, uh, print out whatever results you got from whatever expression you just wrote and read that. And then you loop back and do something else. So we're going to first read all the previous commands I've written. Uh, just look at them briefly. 
I happen to remember that there's this way to search a, a Python direct uh, any directory on a, on a file system, an operating system like Linux, where I am now. You can search for a bunch of files using this glob uh, method on the path object. I messed up here because I was not instantiating the object first. So I first have to instantiate the object and tell it to use the local uh, directory, the dot in POSIX uh, world. That's the world that I live in in Linux. That's where you're going to probably want to live. I'm going to show you how to install a Linux environment within your Windows system. Um, it's called git bash if you want to start looking at uh, how to do that. But anyway, uh, this dot represents whatever directory I'm currently in. So I'd already CD'd into the, that grades directory uh, under week zero one. And then I can glob, um, that glob, this is called the glob star, which means it's like a wild card, kind of like regular expressions. But again, you don't have to worry about this. This is all very advanced stuff. But anyway, I'm going to glob for all the HTML files by saying star.html as a string inside of the glob method on the path object. And this path was set up to point to this directory here, week 01. So that dot just means week 01 directory in my file path. Um, uh, so let's see if we can look at those paths. So I've, I've got them in a list now. I had to convert it to a list. So this creates a generator. Again, don't have to worry about it, but then I convert it into a list. And so that path now is in a list. So you can do things like, what's the length of that list? This is something you're gonna learn about really soon here. Uh, the length of that list is 35. So I've got 35 different files. So 35 students have submitted their uh, homework assignments for this assignment out of 40 uh, or 43, I think we have in this class. Uh, not sure how many of you were able to get your account set up and everything. Some of you are tr struggling with uh, the IT department. But anyway, uh, let's see. We've got um, so the paths. Let's look at the first paths. So the, the first object is always indexed with a square bracket zero. And um, so this is not uh, Brandon's that I'm going to have to deal with first. And that's why I was pointing out this new line thing that I had. Anyway, let's look and see what I did. Um, so you can see over here, it in colored. Uh, this is in my text editor, Sublime, another great program for you to use. So I'm gonna get rid of all the useless commands that didn't do anything, that ended up not working. Um, and I'll use just this one. Um, don't need to print, the, uh, print uh, in my Python, you don't have to use the print statement. If you put an object on the line by itself, it'll automatically assume that you want it printed out. Um, that's not gonna happen on RuneStone Academy and that's not gonna happen in the normal official Python interpreter. Uh, but if you wanna use IPython, I like to think of it as interactive Python. It's a lot more fun to interact with. Um, you get syntax highlighting. You don't get it on your history, but you do get it while you're typing. Um, and you can And you can do all these cool things like saving your history to a file like I did here. And now we're looking over at that file over here and I can edit it and clean it up. Um, and you can get the prompt and the output along with your actual commands, or you can get just the commands. Dash F means file when you're using the hist command. Really handy tools if you like to use this super productive way of writing code and prototyping things. So anyway, um, I'm gonna wanna iterate through that with a for loop, iterate through the list of paths and go through each one of them. In this case, I'm just gonna start out with just the first one, that one by uh, Brian. Uh, so we're going to the HTML file. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna get the actual HTML string out of the file by opening that path um, that includes the directories and the file name. So it's, it knows exactly where to find it. It opens it and then it reads it all in as a big string all at once. And then I can print it to the screen, take a look at it. Um, I'll need to look, open up a, a different um, Py file. And that's gonna be, I've moved it over here with my other Python code. Uh, do I have the IPy? There it is. Um, so I called it this, the first time it's not going to be syntax highlighted doesn't look like but you can see all the paths when i when i just put paths on a line by itself it listed all 35 of them 
Uh, next, when I did this, this for loop and broke out of it, uh, nothing really happened. Um, so I, because I made an error here, I didn't open the path first. So I need to open it before I read it. And then everything came out fine. Um, and now I've got that HTML object. I'm gonna split it into lines using split lines on any string. We'll do that. It'll search for any new lines or carriage returns and split it up. That gives me a list of strings, pretty close to what I want. And you notice how Brian's submission had paragraph marks around every line. So it had it was spaced out a little bit differently than uh, than Brandon's, but it, it still sh it still ran fine for me. So I'll show you how I ran it. So I've got all the HTML. Um, that's for loop. I'm not going to use it quite. Yeah, might as well. Let's go ahead and use it right now as our outer loop. So I'm going to grab that code in the form over here. So th this is all stuff that I need. Uh, oops, I'm going to have to change that path. Though. If I'm not careful, I'll overwrite the old paths that were um, that I've already done. So I don't want to do that because I'm in a new directory now. So I'm going to use the old paths, the old list of paths. I'm going to break, break up that first file. I'm going to put it to the screen just like I did before. Uh, and I'm going to do this. I did the split line. Oh, I've already done the split lines because that's what I pasted just now. No, I guess not. I'm not sure why I printed out them all, but oh, I, I have a print statement in my for loop. Um, anyway, I'm going to, I don't really need that. Now, ultimately, we're not going to even need the, the break statement. The break just stops the loop so that I can get in there and examine that one file. I'm going to split that into lines. I'm going to put that in a, um, uh, let's do lines equals that HTML split lines. Uh, and then I'm going to do, let's get rid of this other mistake. Well, not mistake, but uh, so uh, like you learned this week in your lesson, if you have a, a, an evaluation and you don't store it in a variable, you can't reuse it. So I'm, I'm going to put it in a variable so I can reuse it. We got the, we can have the number of lines there. I found out that it was, the 16th line it looked like to me. Let's see what that is. So this is the last line. This is the, if I said minus one, it would be this line. Minus two would be this line. Minus three would be this line. Minus four would be this line. So I'm gonna stop the iteration on my slice at the negative three. So it'll stop right before this div symbol. And then I, I counted up from the top and I found the 16th line worked out well in order to you can see I tried it first, just starting at the 16. I got lucky and it worked. So uh, that should be all we need um, to get the lines that have code in them. You notice that I counted back from the end and from the beginning so that hopefully the beginning, the header will always be the same and the footer will always be the same in everybody's assignment. And so it'll give me all the lines in between. So I counted up from the end using negative, and I counted it forward from the beginning. And this should always contain everybody's code. Let's bring up um, the correct HTML. Um, how can I easily do that? Uh, this would be, uh, I wanna look at Brian's. Okay, here we go. Uh, let's look at that. Here we go. Still doesn't look like the right Brian. Uh, so this was Brian, uh, not Brandon, but Brian Koo. Let's hope I'm not butchering his name, but the file we want is this Brian. Oh, there's a Dylan Koo and a Brian Koo. Okay, uh, so this is the actual correct submission. And as you can see, I've gotten the correct um, lines from them. Uh, the correct lines are um, starting at 42 and printing 42. It looks like he also has an empty line of I uh, hope there's this blank line at the beginning of everybody's submission because um, I'm skipping that. That's the 16th line. 
I may or may not be correct there, and I'll have to double check when I do it on other people's code, but that I'm getting all their code. But anyway, looks like I got all of Brian's code, so I'm going to run it now. So the next thing I need, I need to do within that for loop where I have that break statement, I'm going to need to go a little further, and um, I'm going to need to do this next bit. So the next thing I wanted to do was to, um, to run. Well, first, I need to do some string substitution, so let's do that first. I'm going to build up the code um, as I can build it up as a single string, but I found that was harder to run. So I'm going to run it as individual lines of code. So I'm going to do this for loop. Um, 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 um. Looks like I got the lines here. And this, this looks like the one where I actually did the evaluation. So let's copy that and let's put it inside of our for loop. I'm going to move it all the way up here. So we've got the HTML. I'm going to indent this again. So we've got a, we've got a, a nested for loop. You're going to, that's an advanced thing. Don't need to worry about that. Um, where do they create the lines? Here's the lines. So I need to do that as well. Do that right before here. So now we've got a nice little short program that does both of those things. Gets all the files, goes through all the lines of that file, at least the code lines, and then it actually runs them. Only problem is this prints out, it does the thing that um, Brian asked it to do. It prints it out to what's called standard out. So I need to look up, how do I capture the standard output and capture that within a string? And I found that in the stack overflow. So uh, I looked up in my favorite search engine, Metagur. Um, Metagur.org is a nonprofit uh, and search engine that aggregates a lot of other search engines and doesn't give you any of the ads. So you get all the good stuff without the bad stuff. And it's free. Uh, you can support them with donations if you like and get a little, little extra features. But uh, but if you don't want to, and it's, and it's hosted in Germany where they have very strong privacy restrictions. So it's one of the most private, most effective search engines you can use. Um, then you've got, so I'll go to, I found that Stack Overflow and on that uh, answer was exactly what I was looking for. Only really needed to know, um, uh, oops, this is the wrong one. This is the one where I needed to find the string IO class. I just needed to know that class and where to import it from. So this is all I really needed. Because uh, I don't need to actually put a string in it. I just need to create an object because that object is needed by this other thing called a context wrapper. And in the context library in Python, you can use this thing called a redirect std out, which is exactly what I want to do. But I need that file like object. It needs to either go to a file or a string that acts like a file. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to use the string IO object. To, so I, and then I put that in the actual code, I think, all, that I've already run. Let's see, do I have that context lib thing here? I don't see it right away. So we're just going to, I must not have printed it out when I did it. So let's go to our code. And I'm going to do that on the for each line. Let's see, do I want to create that context on for everything? No, let's do it on each individual line itself. We're going to create a new string IO object. So let's first let's import all the things we need um, from context lib. You can see that context lib is a, is a function that's within the module called context lib. So I can do an import so I don't have to type it every single time. Uh, I can read, I can import it like this using the from statement to tell it where to import it from. Oops. And I can even do tab completion on it so I don't have to type it. Okay, there we go. Uh, or copy paste it correctly. Uh, now, um, now whenever I do the eval, instead of printing to the screen, it'll print, it'll, it'll print it to my string like that acts like a object if I've done that correctly. So I need to say from IO import String IO. Uh, might as well fix this up here. I happen to know what the real path is. Um, slash home, slash Hobbs, slash code, slash Mesa Python, 
slash Mesa Python. You can find this code on GitLab if you look for a Mesa Python. And um, it's also in the data directory. I always have a data directory in all of my projects. And in there, I have a private one. So I don't actually push your uh, homework assignments up to GitLab so you can't see each other's homework. And then in there, I have that week 01 directory. And that's all I need. Since I'm no longer in that directory, I have to give it up the path. Notice I'm using forward slashes. Uh, the, uh, you're going to want to get into Git Bash so you can use forward slashes too, because even Microsoft tried to go back to the forward slashes, but they found that they'd messed it up in so many different programs in so many different places, and they'd use bad um, practices in terms of software development. They didn't define this in one place. They defined it everywhere in their code, and they changed it to a backslash just to make it hard on everybody else. And um, and it came back and bite up, bit them because karma's uh, takes good revenge. It um, it caused them a lot of trouble, so they were never able to get it back to the, the right way of doing it. Because so now it's really hard for them to write reliable code, and that's why they have the most bugs and security breaches of any operating system in on the planet. And Linux has the fewest. Uh, anyway, um, we got the path. Uh, so I'm gonna I'm gonna break it up into uh, I'll call this week one. Notice I use O one so that uh, paths will sort out, and now I just say uh, uh, week O one, or I could say call that path, but I'm not going to week O one uh, dot glob HTML. That's what's gonna go into my paths variable. I'm going to list it out all on one line. That other line was getting big, but this line was a little short. So I'm just combining a couple commands on one line. Now let's see. I'm going to call that a directory because it's a directory. It helps to use variable names that you understand uh, so you can remember what's in them. OK, we're getting pretty close to readable code that does what we want. Um, Got the HTML, got the lines, got the code lines pulled out. Uh, why three colon negative four? Oh, this is trying to skip the um, uh, the the paragraph mark at the beginning and the end. Interesting. I'm gonna do it a little better than that. I'm going to say line equals line dot replace we're going to get rid of all the paragraph symbols and we're going to get rid actually i'm going to make that a for loop for token and i'm going to give it a i'm going to make a list of strings i could do this a fancy way but i'm going to try to do it the a way that you might understand. You can create a list of strings like this. With a bunch of, um, I'm going to use single quotes. That's common for machine readable strings. If it's human readable strings, you typically use double quotes just to make them stand out. Anyway, where was I? BR is another symbol I want to replace. They're going to all be replaced by the same thing, but then I'm going to, so I'm going to go. Uh, I'm going to replace token with nothing. That should clean up the string quite a bit. And now I need to create a code lines outside of that. Um, maybe I don't need to record those code lines one at a time. Um, unless I want to have one big submission list of all the code from one user, I'm going to hope that each one of your lines is independent of the one before it should be, uh, according to the instructions. And I think most of yours are. So I'm just going to run them all independently and I'm not going to even store them. Uh, the line itself is going to be have been cleaned up with this command. And that should be all I need to do to evaluate that line. 
And this file-like object, oh, I forgot to do that. Uh, let's turn that, um, another word for a file-like object is a stream. It's a stream of text or a string of bytes, stream that can be can flow into a file or flow into a string or flow somewhere. It has a read, a stream has a read and a write. You can go downstream or upstream. Uh, anyway, the stream needs to be created right before I use it. So I'm gonna say stream equals string IO. String IO, shorthand for string IO stream. Okay, um, IO means input and output, usually from your disk, like a file, or what some people are starting to call memory because they're using flash memory for your hard disk. It used to be an actually spinning piece of silicon, but no longer magnetic silicon. But anyway, uh, we've got ourselves a redirect standard out and of that stream and then we're evaluating the line so in that stream once i've written it i'm not sure if i need to open it again but i'm going to print stream dot read and see if that works see if that's how i get it so i'm oh wait, wait the stream is going to go away get closed i think Let's try this. Let's see what happens. Uh, actually, I probably do want to close it and then open it and, and read it again. Maybe I don't need to open it. Maybe the uh, streams don't have an open and close. Let's see how this goes. This is going to do it on all the paths and all the lines of all the paths. I'm going to have it break after the very first line of the very first file that it finds. Let's see how this goes. And you can copy and paste from your text editor and run it. I could save it as a file. It already is a file and I could run it that way. I'll show you how to do that in a second, but I'm gonna paste it for now. Uh, I'm missing a colon. Yeah, I forgot about that. I remember whenever you have a with statement or a for statement or an if statement, you need a colon at the end of the line right before you indent. Whenever you indent something, basically, you need a, need a colon to let it know that you're about to indent it. Okay, it didn't print anything to the string. The stream may be at the end of the stream, and it's undefined outside of that context, seems to be. Let's try that again. Um, let's put it inside and see if that helps. That did not help. Uh, let's make sure our paths is a list of paths. No, it's not finding any paths. That's the problem, because I did not remember it correctly. Let's try that again. Uh, so week 01 dir and you can uh, you can do tab completion on strings even in uh, Python and IPython, which is really handy. So it's in code. I thought it was in Mesa Python. Let's try that again. Good. Let's try getting that out of the way. So I ugly face. Out of the way. There we go, Mesa. And then let's try. Oops, let's try slash on that. And then we're gonna be in data, private. And then we're gonna do week 01. Ooh, it's not, it's not week 01, oh, grades. Then week 01, there we go. Uh, don't need the slash. I'm not sure if it would make any difference. And there's a way to do this slightly differently. I could say, dot home, I think it is. And I'm not sure whether you use parentheses or not, but anyway, there's another way to do this that doesn't require me to remember quite as much, but I'm gonna do it this way. And then let's get rid of that, all the other preliminaries and let it do its thing. Good. Weird. Eval didn't do what I expected. The code object. Uh, let's get rid of the, let's see what line is. Oh, it's not code.
Ah, let's look at the HTML for this. Um, Brian Koo. Let's make sure that's the right. What uh, what path am I looking at? Uh, file. What am? Where am I in this thing? I've oh, got HTML. So we're looking at oh, Gage McDonald. Oh, he gave me an answer rather than actual. Um, so this one's not going to be able, automatically gradable. Uh, yeah, so he was trying a really, he was trying a, a different way where he would say X, he was trying to uh, assign a variable. I was trying to have you be a little more clever and be able to do it even without a variable. You don't need to assign a variable to the integer. You could have just said print three. That would have been a better answer to the question. I need to look at the rubric to see if that was enough and whether it, it's definitely not going to print out more than one character. So anyway, I'm going to have to do a try accept on that eval because sometimes some students aren't going to write put code that runs. I know that was part of the assignment. And let's look at what kind of exception we had. Except, let's notice how it turned purple and I knew that I had typed it wrong when it was white. Uh, the, ex the kind of exception that we encountered was a name error. Oh, no, 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 back here. Syntax error, when it did an eval error, after is not a keyword and it wasn't defined. So syntax error is what we got when we tried to run that code of and syntax. This should turn red as well. Oh no. Okay, good. It did it does know about it though. I think if I do it like this, it will catch that syntax error and print. The name or the path, the P is what I call the path. Um, and I'm just going to do the name of the file so I don't have to worry about anything else. I could actually extract his first name to hide his student ID or something if I need to. But let's just put the whole file name out. And that should be enough for me to know that person got it wrong. Or yeah, I'll need to look at it. Um, Evaluate this homework by hand. And that should be enough. And then we can skip that one. Uh, and let's put the stream inside. And let's see how we go. Let's try one more time. Do I have the colon? I forgot the colon again. Let's fix that up. Nice thing about using a text editor, if you always change it there, then when it runs, it runs, and it runs forever. OK. Why? I think, this, was this the incorrect path? Yes, that was the incorrect path. So let's get the correct path. Well, saying, once you get it right in the text editor, then it's right for good. So let's get it right in the text editor without the prompts. Okay, this is going to be a hard video to edit and even harder to watch. Let's call it quits. You get the idea. I'm going to try to evaluate your code by hand. Uh, when it needs to be and evaluate it automatically when Python can do it for me. Uh, that's it for today. See you soon online. Uh, stop recording.